Hey, Donald Miller here. So, usually when this video occurs, I'm happy, but I'm tired. And today's no different. So, we're working on average 12 hour days towards the ends of these things because it's cleanup time. So, this is our cleaning process for all of our knob and tube rewires. So, I'm gonna show it to you. Um, we're halfway through the second floor and you can tell clearly what has been cleaned, what hasn't been cleaned. But what we want to do is when we return this home, we want the house to be clean as a sterile environment. So basically, you know, if you have children or if you have infants, you know, you shouldn't be reluctant to put your children on the floor after one of our rewires. It doesn't matter if we run into lead or whatever we hit within the walls our process or our product prepares for that so you don't have to worry about the like lead or asbestos being ground into your hardwoods because if it's in the hardwoods it's not coming out so all of our process protects the home during the remediation so let's just do a walk through and you can see here so if you saw this on other videos this was all protected okay so it's been opened up. I started in the master bathroom, okay, because the master bathroom has to be super clean. All right, now I'm gonna go into here and you can see we started taking all of our plastic down. Now, if you notice during our rewires, this is all covered in plastic. There's a big reason for that because if not, you would have to wash all these clothes. All right, and that's the last thing you want to do after getting your home rewired is having to take your clothing to get washed, especially if the rewire did not have proper protection. So as you can see how clean the house is right now, it's not just surface clean. I mean, we do a deep cleaning. All these suits were all protected. None of this has to be washed. All right, and if you watch one of our earlier videos for this house, you'll see the protection. All right, hardwood floors, they're exposed. And right, now that's where we're, that's our cleaning line, okay? But here's all of our patchwork. This is all authentic plaster patching, okay? None of this is filler patching. Filler patches are the worst thing you can have in a plaster home. I'm not saying people don't, like sometimes it's acceptable if you don't have enough money, but I'm saying for the quality of the product, a plaster patch is best. And there's a different price compared to, a plaster patch is far more difficult than a filler patch. All right, this is rock hard. All right, so this room is clean. We're gonna go in here and they opted for his and her bedside switches. So, from either side of the bed, you can turn the light on or off. Same, same thing over here, depending on who got into bed. You can also set your dim. And watch this, so say it's nighttime. You can actually set this dim at this level so when you wake up in the morning, you're not blinding everyone. All right, that, that those two, there's his and hers, or vice versa. All right, we also have it controlled over here and by the front door. So that's a four location switch. It, it, it does come in handy as you get used to it. It's amazing. It changes how you live every day. So here's our cleaning. Now, stairs are all done. Now this still needs a Murphy's oil. So we're still gonna polish this one more time. Um, it's been wiped down twice already. So it'll get another wipe down. We installed some recess lighting going upstairs. And you can see we, this is, you can see how damaging a plaster uh, proper knob and tube remediation is. So th this is the debris that we're talking about, that if we didn't have proper floor protection, 
this would be ground into your hardwoods. And yes, you can mop it up, but you're not gonna, it's gonna dull the finish. All right. So now we'll go into a bedroom that we did not clean yet. Now the vacuum is gonna be a little loud. We'll, we'll, we'll take a trip upstairs. This will all get wiped down one more time as soon as we're done pulling all the floor protection up. But they opted for recessed lighting here. So we put in some three and a half inch contrast IT 3000s. It's a really nice recessed light. All right. And this is our finished product. All right. Nothing on the hardwood. Well, my hands are dirty. But there's nothing on these hardwood floors. These did get a Murphy's oil. They might get one more. We had the windows open, just airing the house out because, well, let's face it. There's been about five contractors in this house for a month long, sweating. Believe me, we don't smell that good. Um, but yeah, lights are back up, and here we go. Here's our recess lights. We did three in a row, nothing fancy, but the simplicity of the design is what makes it nice. All right. All the hardwoods, all these wooden doors have all been wiped down. All right, they're all smooth. There's probably a little bit of age on them. They might get another wiping, but no, that's basically the finish at that point. All right, we'll do the other room. All this wood was all protected on our other videos. And if we didn't protect it, we would have had to have cleaned every little piece of it. It would have taken hours. So we try to protect everything. We don't have to do a super cleaning. We'll still polish it, but we're just not gonna do a thorough cleaning as if it was exposed to plaster dust. All right, in this room, here's their furniture. It's all been shipped from overseas, so they kind of just sat it here, and we still protected it. All these boxes were protected in plastic, and then we, we taped it to the RAM board on the floor. That's the level of protection, because if you're getting a proper remediation, you want that level of cleanliness, okay? You don't want to be inconvenienced with everything in your house possibly having lead exposure on it, okay? It's not just lead though, but it's all the other crap that's in that plaster. It's the last thing you wanna live with. All right, so all of our rewires are done with cleanliness in mind. Um, we do have an investor's rewire. It's a different ball game. And you really, when you get knob and tube estimates, you really have to be careful what you're getting. Okay, it's not just the dollar amount, but what value you are getting for that dollar. What type of holes are they putting in the home? How are they patching the home? Um, the size of the holes, okay? Are they doing a filler patch? Are they doing a California patch? I wouldn't do a rewire in a really nice old plaster home and put a filler patch on or a California patch, okay? It's, we've been asked to do it and we warn them of what quality of patch that is. And honestly, we would rather give them an estimate for a small hole rewire and not have us patch at all. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll remove patching and you can get whoever you want to do whatever quality of patch you do. Because I know our plaster patching, if they were to get it outsourced for oftentimes what we charge for plaster patching, is half the price a plaster guy will patch because we have an in-house plaster guy. 
We have a guy that specializes in plaster that is in-house. He doesn't go anywhere else. He just patches plaster for us, okay? That's what, that, it's not just about the electricians. It's, it's more about the quality of the rewire, the type of people that are gonna be in your home that really make for a quality. And a quality rewire is 100 times more pleasant to live through than a low ball rewire. Ask anyone that's lived through a low ball rewire and they will tell you the horror stories in them. So God bless, thanks for watching, take care. Have fun out there.